good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you today? It's okay. Um, so um, very tired and ah. stressed. Oh my god. And it is just Tuesday. <laughs> yes, I I think that is a uh, Tuesday. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> it will be a the long rest day. The, 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 the days. <laughs> yes. Yes. But are you in your house? Yes. Yes, teacher. In okay. my house. Okay. Thanks, God. Hello, Berta. I think that she has troubles with the audio. Berta, can you listen to me? No, she cannot. Okay, it is eight o'clock, so we are going to start. And uh, <clears throat> even though we uh, didn't finish the exercises from yesterday, we are going to start with uh, some, it is like a, a quiz, <laughs> but they are online exercises. And now let us see, because we are going to make like a short review about countable and uncountable nouns. Can you see the link that I have already posted in the chat box? Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So you can click on it. And immediately it is going to um it is going to show you the test that I have here, right? You can see this test. This is not very difficult. What the, the only thing that you need to do is to choose. For example, you see the picture that we have here. You see the noun. In this case, I have water, and then the, you decide. <clears throat> Sorry, you are going to click if it is going to be countable or if it is going to be uncountable. You click on it and then you continue with more exercises. Can you do it, please, in this moment? And then, please, uh, the um, 
the result, take a screenshot and post it here in the chat box. Can you do it? Of course. Did you understand what we are doing? Deme señales de humo, aunque sea. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I finished the exercise. Okay, thank you. Can you just post uh, a screenshot in the chat box? Oh, maybe you have already done it. Yeah, you did it. So sorry. Okay, Jennifer, you got the 15. They are very easy, right? Um, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So we got the first result of, from Jennifer. Finish. Okay, thank you. Post your picture and the, the screenshot in the chat box. Finish, teacher. Okay, thank you. Okay, Rose, I can see now the result too. Okay, 15 out of 15, good. So no troubles at all. Very good. Okay, now that you have finished, um, immediately when you finish, you continue a posting, right? The result in the chat box, please. And we are going to continue with uh, the information that we have. Yesterday, We were working here in the equations. And uh, I wanted to show you that we have here the two equations, but these are just from the book, right? We have uh, how much and how many. Tell me, Berta. ¿Ha levantado la mano, Berta? Pero tiene el micrófono apagado, Berta. Hola. Hola. Este, yo hice el ejercicio que usted quiere que peguemos en el chat en la mañana. Tengo que volverlo a hacer. En la mañana. No, Berta, ese yo lo pegué en el, en el chat box. En cuanto comenzamos la ah. clase. Que son otros ejercicios. Así okay. parece. <risa> ok. Ok, voy a buscarlo. Ok. Ahí están en el chat box. Ok. Okay, guys, as I was telling you, uh, yesterday we started with equations, uh, how much and how many. How much we uh, understood that um, it is used whenever we have uncountable nouns. And also what we are going to use, how many, whenever we have countable nouns nouns. I want you to pay attention about 
uh, the equations because it is important for us to understand that maybe, maybe I'm going to say, well, but refrigerator, it is countable. In weight, it is uh, in plural. So why is this uncountable? Because this is in plural weights and refrigerator is countable. And the teacher is saying that I can use how much with uncountable noun, but it is not uncountable refrigerator, not even weights. What do you think might be the answer, guys? For you, what do you think the answer might be? Or aren't you confused with this? Hello? Aren't you confused with this? Chicos? Maybe, maybe it's a object refrigerator. No, or no, it is a noun and it is countable. It is countable, but But, uh huh. Berta, do you raise your hand? I know. Yes, Berta. No, se me puede quitar la mano. Ah, okay, so it was a mistake, don't worry. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Okay, guys, let me tell you something. What happens here is the word weight, it is uncountable. The word weight, right? Weight, it is uncountable. But what happens here, it is that this S, it is a little mistake. This, it is not, this cannot be in plural here. Weight, it goes like, um, for example, um, money, right? Money. It is uncountable. Weight, it is uncountable. La medida que voy a ocupar para pesar algo, that is going to be countable. For example, si voy a medir refrigerator, I'm going to use, ¿cuál medida voy a utilizar? Pounds, right? I'm going to use I'm going to use pounds. Que son libras, right? Right. So, Revisemos ahí un micrófono, por favor. Que nos está interfiriendo. Thank you. So, if we have pounds, correct this mistake, please. Why? Because this is what I am want to use, right? Weight. So I need to know the weight of the refrigerator, but weight, it is uncountable. That is related to the refrigerator. That is another thing, right? But indeed, the point goes here to weight without S. And then the, the equation 
We have two different kinds of questions here. The first one, how much does the refrigerator weight? But also, I have how much does it cost? I need to know price. Price, it is related to the cost. It is the same thing as money. How much does it cost? We want to know price. It is going to be uncountable because we are talking about money. How much is the warranty? Or how much does it storage? I need storage. Storage is uncountable. Warranty, it is uncountable. Price, it is uncountable. Weight, it is uncountable. And that is why we have here, all the equations are with how much. But we can use two different ways to ask this equations. I can use the verb to be or I can use it with auxiliary and a verb. Right? Auxiliary and a verb. I can say how much does it cost or I can say how much is it if I want to know price. How much is it? Or how much does it cost, right? So we can use both, both. Now let us move to the other side. And in the other side we have, how many, they follow almost the same structure. How many we introduce? Features, auxiliary, half. How many colors is verb to be? This in. How many functions does it have? How many products do you want? Check which of them are using the verb to be and which of them are using the auxiliary do or does with different verbs that is not the verb to be. Pay attention, pay attention. If in the equation you have the auxiliary does or do, because it can be do or does, you don't have the verb to be in the question. How many functions does it have? How many products do you want? How much does it cost? Mm -hmm. And the other way around. Check the ones in which we, are, we have used the verb to be. If we have used the verb to be, we are not using the auxiliary do or does. Check it out. I'm going to erase this mess. Okay, I'm going to I have is, I have a is. Do I have the auxiliary do or does in the same question? I don't. It is only the verb to be. And if you check the other ones, does, 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 we don't have the verb to be, does does do. We don't have the verb to be. 
So we need to pay attention even when we structure, when we write the equations, how much and how many. We need to take it into account, not only the uncountable or countable nouns. What we need to take into consideration, it is the grammar structure about this ones, right? But we have to be really careful. I'm going just to give you like more extra details about this. The difference that we can have with how much and how many of course, it has to be, and it is related with countable and uncountable, right? And uh, also, it is good to understand that we can use how much or how many, not only with food, because sometimes we have practice, we have studied a lot, about countable and uncountable nouns, but just related to food. In this case, in this lesson, the lesson that we studied yesterday, we have vocabulary that is not related to food, right? But we are going to see some of them. So in here it says, when we want to know the quantity, or amount of something, we use how much and how many. But, but, it emphasizes again, if we are going to use how much, it means that we are going to use an uncountable noun. Here, we have vocabulary related to food. But also, I have here vocabulary that is not related to food. I say, how much sugar would you like? Or how much milk is in the fridge? Food. But then I have another one that is not related to food. And then I say, hey, how much time? I don't say how many time. I say how much time. And then the auxiliary. How much time do we have to finish? How much time, how much money did you spend? Past tense. Right? Then. How much? I want to know price. Price. Where we were uh, studying in the previous slide. If I want to know the price, of course, I'm going to use how much. But I can ask in different, in different ways. I can say, how much is this dress? How much are these shoes? Pluto. How much did your jacket cost, past tense. How much will it cost me in future, right? But I need to use different ways. So it doesn't mean that we can ask the price just by saying, how much is it? No, we can choose a variety of different ways to know the price. Right? Let us see. I have in this exercise, it is how much did your jacket cost? But what about if I want to ask this question in present? What would be the correct question? What do you think it would be? the correct structure. In present, this is in past. I do. Need... So I can say, how much do your jacket cost? 
Are you in agreement? What do the others think? Are you in agreement? He says that I can say, I can use, do. Are you in agreement? Or not? ¿De quién depende ese do? Del tiempo en el que tú estés realizando la acción. Ajá. That is the tense. And do is the present, right? That is a good point. But... Can we can we check the, the microphone please? Can we check the microphone? Thank you. Thank you. But it is in present and you are right. It is in present. But there is something that doesn't match with it. Is it do or does? What do you think? When do we decide if it is do or does? When do we decide that? Maybe because you are talking about the jacket cost. It is because of that, Elsie. It is because of that. And if I am talking about the jacket, it is one object, right? Mm -hmm. It is one object, so it is third person singular. And if it is third person singular, what it is the appropriate way to ask the question. Is it do or does? Does. In this case, it is does. And the correct question is, how much does your jacket cost? Simple present, third person singular, okay? Changing the auxiliary to do, it was okay. Because it is, it represents present but then we needed to look for the appropriate way of conjugate it okay okay good now let us continue i'm going to raise this so this is how much and then we have the next one, the one that we have for countable ones. And then the, uh, Berta says maybe depends of the proverb. It depends of the subject, Berta. It depends of the subject. That's why if the subject, it is a third person subject, so it means that I have to change the auxiliary. Okay. Okay, now let us see this one. I have how many? And how many? It says that I can use it with plural. Plural countable nouns. It doesn't say singular. It is plural. Plural. So I, it means that I cannot say how many they are, how many they 
is there in January. I cannot say it. I have to include the plural of the object. In this case, the noun, it is they, plural. In the second example, noun, plural. Noun, plural. Noun, plural. These students, books, cousins. On my left, they are using the verb to be. How many days are there in January? How many students are in this room? How many students are in this class? 17. But then I have. How many books did you buy? That is in past. How many cousins do you have that is in present? But I'm not using the verb to be. Check this. If I use the verb to be, I don't use another verb. But if I, I'm not using the verb to be, so I need to use the auxiliary that we need in the tense. Right? And then we have here that sometimes we drop, we omit in the equations when it is obvious, something it is obvious. For example, we can say, I would like to buy some cheese. I would like to buy some cheese. This is the antecedent. This is the previous information that you have. Y si usted ya sabe que le están pidiendo cheese, so you cannot repeat it. You can just drop it. And then you say, hey, how much would you like? But you already know about what you are going to talk. Because if that person has already asked for cheese, bueno, usted simplemente avoid using the noun cheese. And then you just say, hey, how much would you like? Because the context, you understand it. I need some coins. The antecedent. This is the previous information. How many do you need? I need some sugar. How much do you need? So I can drop, I can omit the nouns in here. But what happens if I don't have this previous information? ¿Será que puedo utilizar esto? If I don't have previous information? ¿Será que puedo utilizar estas tres preguntas without any trouble? Sí, se puede, porque ella tiene lo que necesita ahí. Solo está preguntando la cantidad. Ajá, pero si yo no tengo esta información, haga de cuenta y caso, that I don't have this information. I don't have here. And then I say, hey, how much would you like? Can I? I cannot. En ese caso, sí hay que preguntar qué es lo que específicamente que quiere. Yes. Because you don't have any context. And then you need to say, how much cheese would you like? How many points do you need? How much sugar do you need? You need to include the noun because you don't have any idea about that and only only if you have previous information in the context you can omit the noun do you understand that point yes okay And these are the exercises that we have uh, from the book, right? I have already underlined here 
trying to help you with the nouns. Let us try to identify first what is the equation based on. Let us classify first what kind of nouns do we have. And if we classify first the nouns, then we are going to use how much or how many. Let's see. I have how much or how many pieces do I need to assemble this? Which one do you think it is the correct? How many? How many? How many? Because it is plural. Here I have plural. So how many pieces do I need? Number two. Number two. Books. How much or how many? How many? How many? How many? How many? How much or how many? I think how much because you're talking about oh, how much, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Ya casi caían en la trampa, right? Okay, why? Yes. What is the little trampilla que había aquí? This is plural, right? No puso plural. Uh -huh. It is plural. It says books. So that is countable. And if it is countable, entonces es how many? But okay. we are talking about cost. Price. Not no. countable. Price. Price. And if we are talking about price, it doesn't matter if it is countable or uncountable because you need price. Y para price, ¿cuál es la que ocupamos, pues? How much? How much? How much? It doesn't matter if it is countable or uncountable. So we need to pay attention in that. Good. Number three. So here it is, how much? And number three. How much? Why? It is battery. Battery is, is countable. But you are talking about life. Okay. Battery. Okay, very good. We are not talking about just the battery. We are talking about the battery life. Right? So, in this case, I'm going to say it is how much? How it much? Because it's uncountable, yes? Life, it is uncountable. Yes. Okay? Number four. Hours. Hours. It is plural, so it is countable. How much yeah. or how many? How many? In this case, it is how many. ¿Por qué no puede ser how much? Igual que la anterior, aquí era books y aquí es hours. What is the difference? ¿Por qué aquí sería how much and here how many? Eh, because in, in number four, you are talking about, you are asking for how many hours? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yes. Don't complicate that much. The, the answer is because in number two, you need price. That's it? Okay. That's okay. it. In number two, it is a price. So for number four, you need the amount of hours. Amount of hours. So you say how many? Good. Number five, money. How much or how many? How much? How much money do you have? Okay, there was a piece of cake. And number six, gallons of water. 
Water, oh, it is uncountable. Water, it is oh. uncountable. And for uncountable, I use how much, right? How oh, many? Man. How many? Why? Because gallons. What happens with gallons? It's countable. Gallons of water. Okay. This word, this measure makes the expression countable. Water continues siendo uncountable. But if we add the measure, the expression, it is countable. So you say, how many gallons of water do they need? Okay, guys. Now it is time for us, since we have already understand, I'm just going to give you like extra information about different kind of nouns. Since we are not talking about only about food. So we need to understand that sometimes we are going to find out some nouns that are going to be abstract. And these nouns are going to be related to feelings, your emotions, state, ideas, concepts, events, and qualities. You see that it is not only related to food. We can have a variety of nouns. These are abstract. Also, we can have concrete nouns. A concrete noun A concrete noun it says that it is is a person place or thing person place or thing that can be observed by one of the five senses so it means that you can see it you can touch it you can listen right because it is something physical, right? This is the concrete. So we have abstract and we have concrete. It is important to understand that because with uncountable nouns, I can have abstract nouns, concrete nouns, <clears throat> sorry, and also collective nouns. With the abstract, as we read in the previous slide, we have ideas and emotions. And concrete and collective, it depends on their function, but we can have concrete and collective with uncountable. What about with countable nouns? With the countables noun, we are going to have concrete nouns, collective nouns, and proper nouns. Concrete, collective, and proper. With the countable nouns, we are not going to use the abstract. They have to be just concrete. When we understand that, we can understand these examples too. We have in these seven exercises, the bold words. And we can say, remember that we have feelings here, emotions, and then we have, this is something abstract. Water, it is something concrete. Food, it is concrete but they are uncountable. Water, food in general, air, it is concrete. Fruit, it is collective as thought. And the last one, we have the government that it is collective. So you see, all of them are uncountable but we can classify these uncountable nouns in abstract, 
concrete and collective nouns. And then we have examples for countable. These are a little bit easier because uh, easier to um, identify them. Plurals, right? And then I said, if, if I have them plural, immediately they can tell me that they are countable. Pictures. We have lunch and table. They are concrete. This is concrete. Paintings, concrete. And it is plural. Children, plural. Collective. Instrument, plural. Collective. Politicians, plural. Collective. And the last one, Pennsylvania. It is a proper noun. Concrete, collective, and proper. Any questions so far? No questions? At all. I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we are teacher, going teacher, to Teacher, 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 teacher. Yes? Uh, in the number six. When you talk about um, collective, in this exam, you are talking about politicians, just plural, yes? So in this case, this is a collective, and this is plural, it's it countable. Is plural. It is countable. It's countable. Okay. Yes. okay, okay. All these examples are countable. Yes. All of them are countable. Okay. But they are? Like classified in different kinds of nouns, concrete, collective, and proper. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Okay, now we are going to, we're going to try it because this is the first time and I want you to do it. You are going to get into the platform. Let me see. Where is it? Where is it? I think these are the exercises. Here. We have already completed these exercises and no problem. We have already explained the information in this moment and I think that we have no problems. Now we are going to complete an exercise that is going to be like a piece of cake for you, but you need to get into the platform. We have homework assignment one. In the homework assignment one, we have exercises related to countable and uncountable nouns. There are only five, five exercises, right? Now, can you get into the platform and complete them, please? Can you do it? I'm checking. This is the first check-in. Is it possible for you to get into the platform? This is going to take us around three minutes only. I'm from... Your phone. Can you get in? Can you get into the platform? I'm doing this because I'm checking if you have no troubles at all. Because remember that we need to work. We need to work in these exercises because this coming Friday, in this coming Friday, 
you need to have all the all the activities that we have for example homework two then we have homework three and then we have four and five because we have one homework per each lesson and this is the first one because yesterday we didn't finish so we have to do it today Let's see. Just let me know if you can get into it, right? Obviamente ha costado un montón de cosas, pero con la venida de ese mismo universo y está proponiendo inversión extranjera para, para recuperar ese, todo ese capital invertido para convertir a El Salvador en un polo de desarrollo, no se le puede. Okay, let me know. Let me know if you can get into the platform. Yes. Okay, finish. good. You finished? Okay, yes. good, good. Finish. Okay, thank you. Teacher. Two. Two out of 17, very good. Three have already finished. Three out of six, 17. I'm, I'm doing. I'm done. Done? Yeah. Good. What was the result? Great? Yeah. Good. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Piece of cake, piece of cake now, okay. right? That's it. Okay, guys, so now we are going to continue with Okay, guys. Teacher, uh, yes. you remember the attempts? In this right moment. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm just looking for it. Let's see. Oh my goodness, I don't find it. What happened? I lost it. <laughs> Let me see. Maybe I just misplaced it. I sent it to another place. Let me see. Oh my God. Let's see. I have lost it. I'm going to look for it. I don't know what, what did I do yesterday? <laughs> Where did I send it? Okay, we are going to continue and later when you're working, I'm going to look for it, right? Don't worry that I have to find it. 
Otherwise, I'm going to uh, re-download it. Okay, guys, we're going to continue. Let us just... Echar una pregunta. Yes. ¿Cómo accedo a la plataforma donde están esos ejercicios? Porque tengo un link, entro, me dice que no estoy inscrita y luego vuelvo a entrar y solo encuentro el manual. No sé si es la misma. ¿A dónde está el manual? Ahí mismo. Ahí mismo. I'm going to... Let me... I'm going to stop sharing this. Vamos a ver. This one. A donde está el manual, porque aquí está el manual, right? It says manual. If you can get into this, right? To just look for the course, and then it says section one, you click on this, section one, and then you are going to have all these icons. And then you click here when we have work uh, homework assignment one but it is in the in the same place it is in here okay thanks okay okay so we have uh, with the exercises with the uh, and the platform we have already finished with um, lesson one and now officially we are going to start with lesson two because yesterday we couldn't finish with lesson one so we have lesson two and uh, it is going to be related to certain vocabulary that we have right but the main point, the main objective for this uh, class, it is that uh, you're going to be able to create a conversation using have to or has to. In the environment, of course, according to the um, activities that you develop in your jobs. Let's see. You have in your book this conversation. And in this conversation, we have some uh, words that are highlighted. Let me. I'm going to use a different color. For example, I have here has to, have to, have to have two and have two. When we read this, when we read this, it means that something happens with this structure. But we are going to go little by little. First, we are going to read. We are going to understand the meaning of that structure, okay? First, please listen and keep it in your mind. The second time, uh, I will uh, choose some students and you are going to uh, represent Aaron and Sam, and you are going to read it. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, yes, teacher. Yes, yes okay. teacher. Okay, thank you. I'm. I am sorry to bother you, but uh, I need to 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 listen something. Otherwise, I think that I am alone here. Right? Okay. Now let's see. Listen. The new material just arrived in the morning. Tell Max that he has to store everything. Where does he have to store the boxes? He and Ivan have to store them in the warehouse. Okay, but there are many boxes. Can they use the lift? They have to use the lift. But ask and tell the secretary first. 
she's going to say yes. Okay, she's going to say they can use it. Then I'm going to tell Max and Ivan that they have to do. Okay. Now, let me see. Uh, we are going to look for two different participants. Uh, let me see. Eric, no. Lucy, no. Max, no. Okay, let me see. Kerin? Kerin, are you here? Hello, teacher. Okay, thank you, Kerin. Yes. Kerin and Rose, can you please read? Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Kerin, you are at on. Okay, teacher. Now, the yes. new material you arrive in the morning, tell Matt that he has to store everything. Where does he have to store the boxes? He and Ivan, Ivan have to store them in the warehouse. Okay, but there are many boxes. Can they use the lids? They have to use it, but at and they tell the secretary field. She is going to say they can use it. Then I am going to tell Max and Ivan what they have to do. Thank you very much, guys. Kevin okay. and Rose. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now let us listen to, uh, do we have any volunteers? Two volunteers? Me. Okay. Thank you. Berta and Jennifer. Berta, are you volunteer? I'm so sorry. Es que me acordé que se le levanta la mano sin querer queriendo. Okay, no, I think that she's not. Okay, any other volunteer who helps uh, Jennifer? Hay muchos a la vez. <laughs> okay, Roberto, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, and then you, Kenya, okay? Go okay, um, the new material, okay. The new material just arrived. In the morning, tell Max that he has to store everything. Where does he have to store the boxes? He and everyone have to store them in the warehouse. Okay, but there are many boxes. Can they use the leaf? They have to use the leaf, but as Anna, the secretary first. She's going to say they can use it. Then I'm going to tell Max and Ivan what they have to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Now, I'm going to emphasize and then uh, uh, another couple of volunteers, you are going to read it again. But I want to emphasize just in some words before you continue reading. For example, let us emphasize in the word Store. Store. We don't say a store. We say store. He has to store. Where does he have to store? He and Ivan have to store them in the warehouse. So this word, it is like school. We don't say a school. We say school the same happened with store right and uh, what else let me see okay that is the only one that is the only one that we were like repeating and repeating uh using the same and of course the first one that is arrived arrived okay se recuerdan de las reglas right Okay, arrived, 
Okay, so we have this pronunciation. Okay, in the last couple of volunteers, Kenya, I think that you raised your hand, right, Kenya? Kenya and Berta, okay? Okay, go ahead. Berta, Berta, we have difficulties. We have. Yo la acabo de mutear. <laughs> okay. Berta, se escucha mucha interferencia. Y no la logramos escuchar a usted. I think that we have a lot of troubles with, with your audio, right? Okay, we are going to ask another person to help Kenya, please. No, Berta. Siempre tenemos la interferencia. Pero no hay ruido aquí donde yo estoy. Díganme ustedes si solo soy yo, chicos. El micrófono. Se escucha demasiada de interferencia. Ah, ok. Pues el micrófono. A los audífonos, si se los quita, tal vez. Eh, o no audífonos sé. o el conector. Creo que los audífonos están malos, entonces puede quitárselos y solo que quede con el, el audio del teléfono. La computadora, ok, o del teléfono, ok. Yes, verdad. I think that your, 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 your earphones are the ones. Okay. Okay. Is anybody else who helps? Uh, yeah. Kenya? Siempre se escucha a algo de interferencia, Berta. Okay. I don't know what it really happened in there. Okay, Mateo, Mateo de Jesus yeah. Torres. Ah, okay, no. now, now it, is, it is okay. Uh, eran los audífonos, ya los quité. Okay, better, better. Okay, thank you, Berta and Kenya. Go ahead and read it, please. Okay, go ahead, ladies. Okay. The new material just arrived in the morning. Tell Max that do he has to stores everything. Where does he have to store the boxes? He and Ivan have stored them in the warehouse. Okay, but there are many boxes. Can they use the light they live? They have to use life, but ask and tell the secretary first. She is going to say they can use it. Then I'm going to tell Max and Avan that what they have to do. Thank you very much, ladies. Good. Okay, good. Now that we have this, let us analyze what we have here. Do you understand the context of the conversation? Do you understand the context? The yes. content and the context. Yes. Okay. Did you uh I am um, was was the meaning lift? Do you use lift? Okay. Lift it is something that the, that helps you, for example, to do this. Something that is very heavy. And then you lift it. But not only you, you need like a machine, something to lift it. Okay. 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 In this Thank case, you. it is like the machine. This is the machine. Yes. To lift. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, at any time. Now, what happened with that has to, have to? ¿A qué le suena? 
Oh my goodness. It says, tell Max that he has to store everything. Oh my goodness. Poor Max. Obligations. That's it. That is an obligation. A Max ni le han preguntado. Solo le están diciendo. Okay. Tell Max that he has to store everything. So, it is an obligation for him. In all the sentences that we have here, it means obligation. Where does he have to store the boxes? Equation. He and Ivan have to store them in the warehouse. Sentence. They have to use the lift. I'm going to tell Max and Ivan what they have to do. An obligation. They have to store everything, all the boxes. Obligation. Have to. It is a modal auxiliary. A modal auxiliary that means obligation. Modal for obligation. So I have to say have to or has to. What is the difference between using have to or has to? What is the difference? What can you see here? The person, the person, it, de it depends three on person, three person. Okay, it depends on the subject because this is third person singular. And if I have third person singular, I have to use has to. I cannot say she have to or he have to, it have to. No, for the person singular, I need to understand that I need to change. I need to conjugate the verb. And in this case, it is has. He has to, she has to, it has to. And then both of them use the same verb. I have to use the lift. We have to use the lift or she has to use the lift or he has to use the lift. Here, period and period. Modal for obligation. This is the verb. This is the action. But this is what is telling you that it is an obligation. And then we have two, ex two examples. Max has to store everything, or Max and Ivan have to store everything. The same changes. Only one has to have. Model for obligation. Now let us think in negative. Let us think in negative. Imagine that Max no tiene que hacer eso. Now we are going to think in the other way around. I have to think in negative. Hasn't. Okay, very good. So he hasn't to use the lift. Are you in agreement? Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Okay. Okay, very good, Berta. You can say, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. 
Okay, very good. What about the others? Do you agree? The negative. Yes or not? <laughs> you are waiting the answer. I can see it. Negative. Affirmative. Negative. Por qué don't or doesn't y no haven't? Can you tell me that? Because do is the auxiliar verb. Y por qué no have? Y digo haven't. Okay, let us let us try. Let us think in the answer. There is one reason. Because when you use um, the auxiliary does, doesn't, you, you know how to change the verb uh -huh. in third person. Aha. Uh -huh. But there is another reason, indeed. What do you think? Um, en español, aquí ya no va con has. El I, you, we, they, you. Mm -hmm. Porque veo don't have to también ahí. Ajá. Um, okay. Es porque es... Es como una regla general, tal vez. Have to. Es, okay. Van todas igual. Ok. I'm going to explain you now the reason. I'm going to explain, for example, a quién fue que dijo que la negativa iba a ser hasn't. Yo. Ok, Osvaldo, ok. Eso es lo que vamos a aclarar in this moment. For example, Osvaldo pensó que lo que íbamos a escribir aquí iba a ser hasn't o en su defecto has not y ya estaba en negative right and it is something coherent it is something logical but but we cannot do that because the only way in which I can use hasn't or has not is in qué tiempo? Present. Present. No, 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 no. Entonces no tuviera, uh, no tuviera this one, no tuviera this one. Es fish. No, this is present. Negative, I say, I don't have. She doesn't have. That is present. Pero si, quiero, si yo digo hasn't or has not, I am using another tense. Listen to this sentence. I have bought a new bag. I have bought a new bag. Y la voy a escribir aquí. I have bought a new bag. Negative. I haven't bought a new bag. ¿Qué tiempo es ese? Si 
se llama present perfect. Present perfect. Y solamente in the present perfect yo voy a poder decir I haven't or he hasn't. Porque have viene a ser un modal auxiliary para ese tiempo. Y es con eh, eh, par, el verbo es participio. Past participle. That's past participle. But. Okay. But. I have to have the verb in past participle. Pero el verbo aquí, ¿en qué está? ¿Está in past participle? This one. No, right? It is not past participle. That's why I cannot use this. If I have this is in present in past, in past, in, in negative, I need to use my auxiliary do or does in negative form. And that is why the result is this one. And then I say, I don't have to use the lift or he doesn't have to use the lift or he doesn't have to store everything. Negative. And here I have Positive, negative. Y vamos a contestar la pregunta de Osvaldo. Y entonces, ¿por qué deja de ser has? Y aquí se dice otra vez have. What do you think the reason is? What do you think it is the reason? Porque así es. Ya el no tiempo en el que se have. está haciendo la obligación. Mm, no. Es que las dos están en el mismo tiempo. Todo esto, todo esto es present. Todo. The only thing that what in is in positive and the other one is in, in, in negative. That is the only difference. But all the sentences are in present. Pero ¿por qué aquí escribo have? Y here in the affirmative I say has. Because whenever I use the auxiliary, ¿quién hace la conjugación del verbo? The auxiliary. Pero si yo tengo una oración afirmativa, como la anterior, ¿quién hace la conjugación del verbo? De moda la auxiliary. De moda la auxiliary. Pero aquí dice, has to. Pero, si yo quiero hacerla en negative, ahí me sale otro modal, no, otro auxiliary de tiempo. That is do. Y se combina con este modal auxiliary, pero quien predomina y ahí quien toma el rol de conjugar va a ser el auxiliar del tiempo. 
no el modal auxiliary. ¿Y cuál de los dos es el auxiliar de tiempo? ¿El do o el have to? Do. Es do. Do. Have to. No. Do. Do or don't. ¿Ok? Es el auxiliar do de tiempo, simple present, el que va a absorber the conjugation. And that's why este vuelve a su forma normal. Porque ¿quién tomó el rol de conjugar? The auxiliary. And then I'm going to say, he doesn't have to. I don't have to. We don't have to. She doesn't have to. Lo que va a cambiar is this auxiliar of tense. Pero este fue el B a su forma original. Okay? Negative. Positive, negative. Okay. Questions. It happens exactly the same thing. Vean el modal auxiliary. ¿Cambió o no cambió? No, it didn't change. Have to, have to. ¿Por qué no cambió si aquí está con he, she, and it? What is the reason? El, porque está en el pasado. ¿Pasado? Debo tener el auxiliar. What is the auxiliary? Does. 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 Present auxiliary. So, this is the one that conjugates. And then I say, does he have to store? Do they have to store? Do we have to store? Does she have to store? So, this vuelve a su forma base because the one that is conjugating is this. Affirmative, negative, questions. WH, a uh, yes, no question. This is a yes, no question. The last structure. WH questions. What is the difference between WH question and yes, no question? What is the difference? What is the difference? The model. Between... No. Between yes, no questions and WH question, what is the difference? Y eso va para cualquier tiempo. El present auxiliar. WH more information. Indeed, WH, you are looking for information. WH, you are looking for information. Y la yes, no question? Short answers. No. The person. You give the information. That's it. Personal information. No. You give the information. Listen. Les voy a hacer una pregunta. No en, este, en esta estructura, pero como las yes no questions y las wh questions siempre van a tener la misma función, les pregunto. For example, let's see. Remberto. 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 ¿No está? ¿Se fue Remberto? Yes, teacher. Okay, okay yes, Remberto. Teacher. Remberto. Analice o vean la respuesta que me va a dar Remberto. Remberto. Are you Remberto? Are you Remberto? Hello, hello. Are you Remberto? Yes, sir. 
Are yes. you Mateo? Are you Mateo, Roberto? Yes, I am. Are you Mateo? No, I am. No, not. Aha. No, I'm not. Vean la respuesta de Remberto. Me dijo, yes, yes, I am. No, I'm not. ¿Aceptó o refutó? But, what is the difference si le pregunto? Remberto. Le pregunto a Remberto. Le digo el nombre para que entienda que es para él. What is your name? <laughs> My name is Remberto. Ok, thank you very much. Pasa exactamente lo mismo con cualquier pregunta. The difference between yes no questions and WH question is... WH Question busca una información. ¿Y aquí qué está buscando? ¿Vea? ¿Qué dice? Where? Where? ¿Qué busca? ¿Dónde? Place. 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 Look for a place. Place. That's it. Pero, place. good. ¿Y esta? Busca place. No, es alguna acción. No. ¿Qué busca? An action. Mm, pero a diferencia de la WH Question. No. WH Question busca por un place. ¿Y esta qué busca? Solo que le afirmen o le nieguen algo que usted ya le da. Aquí está la información. Usted ya se la da, mire. Usted le dice, Do you have to store the boxes? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Pero no está buscando information. That is the difference with the WH question. When you say, Where? You say, Where do you have to store the boxes? Pero si lo cambio y en lugar de where le pregunto, when do you have to store the boxes? ¿Qué busco? Tiempo, ¿cuándo? Time. Y si le pregunto, why do you have to store the boxes? Una razón. razón. I'm looking for a reason. So you see, WH question, WH question busca information. ¿Qué clase de information? It can be a place, it can be time, it can be a reason, it can be a manner. Dependiendo de la WH, that is the information that I need. Right? Pero la otra no, la otra solamente. Okay. I'm telling you, Do you, does he, does she, a yes or no? That is what we need. Y no es válido decir like short answers and long answers because in both, in both podemos tener short answers. For example, do they have to store the boxes? Yes, they do. Short answers. A esta no le puedo decir long answer porque yo puedo responder, hey, where do they have to store the boxes? Here, there. Eso no es respuesta corta. Yes, mm. that's why, that's why it is not correct to say, ah, es que las yes no questions son respuestas cortas y la WH respuestas largas. No. WH question can, can have short answers too. You can say, why do they have to store the boxes? It's late. Short answer. Right? So, now that we have understood these, that's what I really hope. Here we have more examples. We have a general view of um not from the equations but um from the affirmative and the negative 
sentences. Let's see. Structure. Have to or has to? It depends on the subject. Base form of the verb. You have to go. He has to see the doctor. You have to drive. The verb is in the base form. All the verbs are in the base form. Let us see the negative. I have to go to school. Negative. You don't have to come. <clears throat> Sorry. You don't have to. Aquí cambiamos el verbo. You don't have to come to school on Sunday. Have to. We don't have to. We have to. We don't have to. She has to. She doesn't have to. They have to. They don't have to. He has to, he doesn't have to. You didn't have to, we don't have to. ¿Por qué encerré esta? What is the difference with the rest of the examples? What is the difference? It's in past. It is in past. It is in past, but the only thing that I need to do is ponerla in past negative. And then I say, you didn't have to work for a salary. You didn't have to work for a salary. But that is the only thing that I did. Now, ustedes van a ir a hacer examples about affirmative and negative. But I want you to keep the same following the structure, right? Following the structure. You're going to work with your classmates. You are going to write down three affirmatives and three negatives. Como equipo, no three por cada uno. Three affirmative, three negative. In total, you will have six examples. Pero... I want you to include examples using third person singular too. At least two sentences in third person singular. Do you understand? Yes? Do you understand? O ya se durmieron? Dentro de las tres vamos a incluirlos en tercera persona. Tercera persona, ok? Pero van a ser tres afirmativos y tres negativos. Ok. Ok. Six yeah. sentences in total. Ok, guys, let me see. Two different teams. No, two, three, three teams. Ok. Five minutes. I think that are enough for you to work. Let us go. Hagan un documento PDF o un PowerPoint. Because I want you to Right.
Low Teacher. Eh, consulta, ¿eran tres por grupo o son tres por cada integrante? No, hoy son seis por equipo. Tres y tres. Tres y tres, Tres negativas. that's it. Yes. Ok, listo. Muchas gracias. Ok, good. Have you finished, guys? No, teacher. Acabo de contestar. Eso estamos. Bien triste me contesta. No, No. teacher. Ok. Le decía, le decía a mis compañeros que I am sleepy. Por ¿Qué eso estoy es? así. I am Ah. sleepy. Ah, oh, no. Yes, it is hard. It's hard. Cuando estamos sleep, it is hard. But go, 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 go. Ya casi terminamos, ¿ok? Okay, teacher. Back Sam. Yes. Otro podría ser, he has to visit the doctor in the afternoon. In the, in the afternoon. And he doesn't have. Y lo mismo. Be ready, guys. We're coming back. Okay, guys, I think that everyone is here again. I would like to see what you have written with your classmates, please.
before 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 you present uh we are going to work with the attendance i do have it ready the attendance so please be ready with your cameras too right listen to your name please and say present berta lilian del carmen centeno present Good. Elsa Benedicta Magaña Umaña. Present. Eric Isaac Chavez Hernández. Now it's Eric. Jennifer Elizabeth Evora Santos. Present. Okay. Jessica Araceli Díaz Rubayos. Present. Jessica Carolina Rodríguez Aldana. José Adilson Vázquez García. José Remberto Calderón Pacheco. Creo que se le congeló la cámara. Carlina Loreni Navarro Ruiz. Present. Kenia Lisset Barrera Hernández. Present, teacher. Okay, Remberto. Yes. Okay. Kenia Stephanie Fuentes Reyes. Kerin Alexis Escobar Cruz. Present, teacher. Lucia Verónica Nerio Márquez. Present. Mateo de Jesús Torres Romero. Present. Maximiliano Adonai Flores Escobar. Present. Osvaldo Vladimir Garay Pineda. Present. Patricia Concepción Alvarado López. Present. Rosa Esther Rivera Hernández. Present. Valeria Michel Monje Valencia. Present. Wilfredo Renderos León. Wilmer Alexander Mendoza García y Amanda Gabriela Escobar. Okay, guys. It's time for you. Can you present, please, what you have done with your classmates? Any volunteer? <laughs> Nobody wants. Ay, señor. Ya se me durmieron todos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who is going to present what you have done? All of you have already written something. Who is going to share? Yes, but um, in my group with Rose and Karen, uh, we don't have project, but we all uh, work in the cell phone. So just write in the notebook, it's okay. My goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, yes. read I'm them. sorry, teacher. <laughs> yes, the pobreza no nos deja, teacher. Ash, Ash, don't say that. Don't say that. Cuando dicen así es cuando va a say. Okay. Okay, read them. You can read them. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Rose, you said it? Rose, are you going to read them? Voy a, voy a leer porque no, ajá, como, como okay. decía el compañero, no pudimos proyectar. Okay. okay. Eh, she has to wait for her mother. His. His ah, okay. mother. Okay. Okay, okay. In the second, he doesn't have to go to the hospital tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Next. 
And in my case, you have to play soccer on Saturdays and you don't have to play soccer on Saturdays. Okay, but listen, Remberto, this is an obligation. Y lo están obligando to play soccer. Yes. It's a tournament. <laughs> money. Okay. okay, okay. You don't want to play. If you win, if you, you win, you win to. money. If you win, you win money. Okay. So and it's then, an obligation. <laughs> under that context, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next. Um I don't okay. have to buy these products. The, that is the negative and the I don't affirmative. Have, yes, negative. Uh, me encargué la negativa. Afirmative no, no llega. <laughs> Le tocó a, a Rosa. <laughs> Pero está fácil, Kevin. Está fácil. Se sí, no, okay, okay. Negación. En este caso, la mía sería I have. I have. I have Ajá. to buy the, this product or this uh, shoes. Yes, yes. 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 En eso estábamos. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You see, yes. but you did it alone. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Thank you, Karen, Rose, and Roberto. So now, five, the five, other five. team. Two. Another team. Que rogados están, muchachitos, por Dios. <laughs> okay. Okay, team number one. Team number one. <laughs> Elsie, uh, Jennifer, Osvaldo, and Patricia, and Valeria, okay? If you don't want, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to ask you. Okay. Um, creo que la compañera, una de nuestras compañeras estaba trabajando la presentación. No sé si ella puede compartir. Okay, you have to, you have to go. I'm going to read because you don't want to read. Oh, my goodness. You have to go to work. You don't have to go to work. She has to do homework. She doesn't have to do homework. We have to study for the exam. We don't have to study for the exam. He has to visit the doctor in the afternoon, and he doesn't have to visit the doctor. He, she has to cook for Saturday. She doesn't have to cook for Saturday. Okay, thank you very much. Volunteers. <laughs> and the last team volunteer goes for Jessica and Mateo. Uh, the positive sería, she has to take care of her son. Negative, she doesn't have to, tear, to take care of her son. They have to play soccer in the weekend. They don't have to play soccer in the weekend. He has to go work now. He doesn't have to go work now. Okay, very good. Siempre igual obligación que jueguen a soccer, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. Now, let us just complete some exercises that we have from the book. In the book, you have these exercises. Of course, we have all the grammar points in the book, but you can see from the book the conversation uh, that we previously read, this conversation. You can have it, right? But now we are going to answer some questions about that. And then we have. Um, Max and Ivan have to or has to stop boxes. Have to. Okay. Have to. Have to. Por qué have to y no has to? Because, because. Uh, uh, the subjects are two persons and the and nouns, um, they are the, the subject is they. Okay, that's it. Number two, I don't, 
doesn't have to or has to have store in the boxes. Doesn't have. Okay. I don't. Doesn't have to help. A él no lo incluyeron. Who are the ones in charge of uh, uh, storing the boxes? Do you remember? Ivan. Ivan, okay. He is the one that is going to help Sam. Number three. Sam doesn't have to or Sam doesn't has to help. Doesn't have. Okay. Doesn't have to. And number four. The secretary have to or has to say that they can use the lift. Has to, has to say. Okay. Third person singular. The secretary has to say that they can use the lift. Okay, good guys. And finally, we have this, that is like the general um, grammar point that we have studied. I'm going to erase this. And uh, this is what we have. For example, the affirmative, this is just in uh, summing up all what we have already done, we have here. I have to store these packages, packages. I have to store. They have to take everything to the warehouse. We have to ask for permission. The truck driver has to bring the material. He has to use the lift. And we have exactly the same, but in the negative form. If I say I have to in negative, I don't have to. I don't have. Easy. I don't have to. If I say they have to in the negative, they don't have to. We have to, we don't have to. The truck driver has to, the truck driver doesn't, doesn't has. In agreement? He has to use the lift, he doesn't has to use the lift. Yes? Yes. Yes. There are two incorrect. Yes, because uh, you use the auxiliary does. Ajá. Uh -huh. uh, lo voy a decir en español. Entonces, <laughs> you can say it that. in English. You can say it in English. <laughs> When you use the the auxiliary and uh -huh. the the next uh, verb uh, pass at uh, the for base or base form, and this case has is a have the principal okay. uh, a form. Okay, you see that you can do it, Jennifer. Okay, uh -huh. aha. Okay. You wanted to say it in Spanish. No, that is the reason, guys. Okay, listen. We have, I don't find this, okay. If I have the auxiliary here, the base form of the verb has to follow here. So you have, you have done this exercise uh, with your classmates. Pero como se quieren ir a dormir ya, you don't even pay attention. <laughs> And you say, is this correct? <laughs> yes, yes, it is correct. Oh, come on. <laughs> it is not correct because we need to pay attention in these aspects, right? 
Do Aye. you ag do you agree now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Entonces, yeah. para quedar liberados, mm -hmm. in the chat box me van a escribir una en tercera persona. Las dos cosas. Una affirmative y una negative. Y si no, no se van de aquí. <laughs> in the chat box. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> one affirmative and one negative. Third person singular. Tiene que ser third person singular. Otherwise, it is not going to be correct. Calladito. Hasta los que están de oyentes tienen que escribir. Finish. Ok, Osvaldo. Ok. Osvaldo, say present and now you are free. Ok. Say present. Osvaldo. Yes. Say present. Present. Ok. I saw. Okay, I'm I'm going to. She he doesn't have to. Okay, Elsa. Present. Good night. Okay. <laughs> Good night, <laughs> Jennifer. Present. Okay. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Rosa. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Now you're free. Rosa. Hello. Good night. Okay. Good night. Okay. See you very tomorrow, good. Everyone. See you tomorrow. Matthew. Present. Okay. Good. Roberto. Yes. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Berta. Present. Good night. Good See you night. tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Uh, Jessica, ah, pero me falta la negativa, todavía no puede decir goodbye. Jessica, Araceli. Ok, Jessica, todavía no se puede retirar, ok. Uh, Patricia Alvarado. Present. Ok. Ahora sí, Jessica. Ok, okay. Jessica. But Jessica, um, ahí tenemos el, lo que estábamos corrigiendo en the, in the last exercise. Si escribimos de auxiliary, doesn't, el verbo tiene que volver a su forma base al, al how, how, how can I say it? Al modal auxiliary. Have, has, vamos a volverlo a have. Porque el das está haciendo la conjugación, ¿ok? Entonces, el resultado de la negativa tiene que quedar. She doesn't have to cook tomorrow. ¿Ok? Ok. Ok, okay Jessica. See you. Ok, see you tomorrow. ¿Y quiénes me falta? Me falta Valerie, Kenia, Maximiliano. Eric. Ahí está Valerie. Ok. Ahí está Valerie. También está Eric. Ok. Eric. Secretary. Present. Ok. Good, Eric. Valerie. Ok. Valerie. Present. Ok. Good. Kenia. Present teacher. Good night. Ok, Kenia, pero no me ha escrito las oraciones. No, permítame. Me le doy un día.
Ok, no se pueden retirar, ok. Kerin, me hace falta uno, Kerin. Yes, negative. Ok, me falta the negative. She has to travel tomorrow, that is ok. But the negative form. Ok, she has to go, he doesn't have... He has to go. She doesn't, he doesn't have to go to the supermarket. Ok, Maximiliano. Ok, Me faltan very poquitos. Kerin, me falta de negative. Ok, Kenya, my sister has to clean. My sister doesn't have to clean. Ok, very good, Kenya. Kenya Stephanie Fuentes. Present. Good night. Good night. Kerin, the negative. Voy, teacher. Problema con teclado. Voy, voy. Ok. ¿Y Kenya Lisette? Kenya Lisette. She has to sleep. <laughs> An obligation. Ok. Ok, porque es uh, your daughter. Ok. Y the negative. She doesn't. A uh, Kerin. El, lo, el último punto, si ocupamos el doesn't, has, tiene que volver a have. Y decimos, she doesn't have to travel tomorrow, right? Ahorita lo corrijo. Oh. Ok. Kenia, la forma negativa de su oración y queda libre también. Sure? Okay. Yes, yes. Yes. Present. Okay. Good night. Okay. Good night, Kerin. She doesn't have to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kenya. Now you are free too. Si no es así, no escriben, chicos. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you very much for being here and see you tomorrow.